but there's nothing like the smell of a steam engine. People wax lyrical about that. But I must admit, steam power has grabbed me since I was very, very small because it was so all-embracing and stimulating. Uh, steam locomotives, I'm afraid I'm anorak enough to uh, bowl up to the local station to watch steam specials go through. And I stand there with a lot of other old boys my sort of age looking at these things and we all look at each other slightly sheepishly, ruefully, because we know that we're desperate anoraks and nobody in the generation below us is ever going to do the same. I'd wanted a boat and particularly to build a steamboat for many, many years, but I had really had to wait until my children were largely off my hands. And so I bought a wreck in 1994 and uh, put it together. It was called Relative Peace, named after the missionary steamboat on the Congo that had really fired my enthusiasm when I was a little boy. And uh, Relative Peace was an exercise in how not to do it. Her engine was too big, the boiler was too small and she, had, uh, she was so heavily laden with um, technical equipment that she was only just above the water, very little freeboard. But uh, she taught me a lot and I ran her for about a year until uh, I broke her up and built something rather better. My current boat, Grace, uh, came to me by accident in 2006. A friend rang and said there's a, a lovely boat down here on the mud at Salkham. Lovely steamboat shape, um, got a nice engine in it but no boiler. Boiler's been condemned you might get it at a good price. Well, I bought it blind, made an offer. Um, the boat, in fact, was a complete wreck, but it is a lovely steamboat shape. And uh, after some 18 months or so of uh, hard work and a new boiler, the thing is up and running. It was Nairimba, named after an Australian naval base and once run by an old Australian naval officer. Uh, she's now Grace, owned by an Anglican priest. Getting a steamboat on the water is not entirely straightforward. Getting on the water itself is fine. Uh, the boat sits on a, a long trailer, a two and a half ton trailer, and I use an elderly four by four to pull it. And I usually go into the River Way at Stoke Lock. Now, the River Way is owned by the National Trust, so I buy a license from them. They look after it beautifully. They look after the waterway very well. And it's a lovely intimate place to steamboat on. But the business of um, uh, Insuring the boat is really quite complex because I have to have a special marine insurance. I also have to have boiler certification because a boiler carrying 150 psi of steam is a floating bomb potentially. So I have to take a lot of care and uh, the insurers ins uh, make sure that I have uh, each year, every 12 or 14 months, I have to have uh, a very significant strip down of the boiler and the thing pressure tested. Uh, it's a, a big task, and it's something that uh, you just have to live with, with a hobby like this. As hobbies go, steamboating is complete lunacy. Uh, if you were really in your right mind, or if I were really in my right mind, I would simply clamp an outboard motor on the back of the boat. But uh, I am fascinated by the equipment, the engine, and so on, the technical side of it. Um, it can be expensive if you really do um, want, to, want to spend a lot of money. You can build something fantastic and use historic uh, My boat is um, a rough old hull um, with contemporary equipment in it. And uh, yes, it's costly, it's insured for a good sum. Um, but I try to keep the, uh, the costs within bounds. It does take a lot of time, but I have to win that time, usually late at night in the shed. And, um, I try and get out there in odd moments, deeply unwinding, actually, and I find it a real relaxation. You can't just buy parts for uh, a steam launch um, or a steamboat engine because they're all totally different. Um, my engine is of a pattern which is well known, but it, it was made from a set of castings by somebody in his garden shed. And um, so if I have problems with spares, I have to make them myself. That's fair enough. And I make the small brass or bronze fittings as well. I have to be able to weld and cut and machine. Um, otherwise, the boat simply doesn't operate and nobody else is going to do those things for me. I'm not totally alone in my madness. I'm a committee member of the Steamboat Association of Great Britain, which has about a thousand members. Other parts of the world have their similar kinds of organisations, Germany, France, uh, America, Australia, for example. And we have, I think, worldwide, probably, probably something like 500 boats. It just so happens that I'm a Church of England minister. I'm not an ordinary one, um, in the sense that I don't have a parish. I'm the director for communications in a diocese, which means that I meet an awful lot of people. I often meet people, too, who are in somewhat extremists. 
and it's lovely to be able to encourage them and to say, look, you know, come out of this situation, why don't you come on the river? It is very much a part of my ministry and I also see it as a way of getting alongside colleagues and encouraging them and people will travel a long way to do something like steamboating, completely off the wall, you know, messing around on the water, doing locks and things like that, getting dirty, having a nice pub lunch. There's nothing to touch it really and I find it wonderfully relaxing. Indeed, it helps me to let off steam.